after you no. put it on. The problem is with haggis and things like that is you have to find the actual stuff oh, right? about the of how far back it goes. Yeah. And some dishes have just, over the years, have just become a natural dish if there's not really, it's hard to, to go backwards right. and find it. Well, yeah, it's interesting because I, I saw a movie like yeah, five years ago and they were talking, to, they were uh, serving uh, traditional English food and what it was was stuff that was introduced into England when the Indians came over in like the 50s when uh, a lot of Indians started migrating to England. So it's like, if I can... Curry this and curry Yeah, curry, curry everything. Curry. And that's... <laughs> culture, and something's introduced, and over time it becomes very extremely popular, and it lasts a long time, a while. Then it becomes the norm. Yeah. It becomes part of that culture now. There must be a feast Saturday night, but I haven't heard any organization. Uh, as far as I know, we're all just going to eat together, and it's uh, kind of a fit for yourself. That's the last I heard. That's what I'm planning on. I don't know. Some bangers and mash. <laughs> Open, it's basically the, the English eat whatever the French have thrown out. Roasting of any sort? Oh, you know the French, oh, the English, they go and to, take it. They wait for the French to cook it, and then they go and take it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, I only have, most of my, all my cookbooks are either Scottish or English. Why do you portray a Swiss character? Why, why Swiss? Well, because when I lived in England, I was with a Swiss mercenary group. So I, I, I just continue to play a Swiss because because you're mercenaries. Swiss and you can, God. Like a real mercenaries or well, I just? Did a reenactment in England. It was a real mercenary. Do you pick an actual person that is yeah, documented to have lived? Deep you want to go? We Typically all have our not. persona names. Mm -hmm. I just made and, one up. And your particular, then you figure out what's the particular time that you like. Searches a lot, you can really get into the particulars of what was going on in that particular time in that region. Mm -hmm. yeah. It depends on how depth you want to go. You Most want... groups frown on picking a particular historical character. Yeah, yeah because it could. Im yeah, not an actual character, but you could base your character on somebody if there's something famous that you can base it on. Mm. In England, it's different because because they're doing historical reenactment. They need the actual people people to portray the actual people that took place at that event. Right, my aunt and uncle, they do Civil War reenactment and they portray actual people who right. were in the Civil War. And they do the same, it's like a play, they do the same act every time they get yeah. together. Okay. They Maybe fall the and they die the same way, you know, in theory. If there were certain things that happened in a battle, they might put that in and say, this has to happen at a certain point. Uh -huh. But a lot of times it, would, it came down to, okay, this side won, so in the battle they have to win today. Have so, you ever done in a, a battle like Agincourt or um, uh, Agincourt, Longshanks or anything? I didn't do Agincourt. I was actually hired to go to France to do a movie. But then the film's crews kept changing all the things and it ended up that none of the English guys went. Oh, bummer. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, but I had to do... Um, I snubbed my nose at you. I did a... Uh, I spot in your general direction. Guys, Tewksbury, did a lot of the War of the Rose period. That was my period that I was portraying at. Okay. So, and then, of course, if there's not enough people, a lot of groups that portrayed other periods would come in and fight, so there wasn't a larger crowd. I see. So, it's easy to get uh, in, a, in the big historical battles, you get guys dressed as Vikings and Normans, and even the, the English uh, Civil War, the Seal Knot Society, which was a big society there, would come in and they would change up some of their clothing a little bit more people. Like, what was it called? Sealed Knot. Sealed Knot, okay. They're a, a big society. Like you make a knot and you pour wax on it or something and put the king's yeah, stamp in it? Their symbol is a little knot. Yeah. Oh, but they, they fought with uh, 18 foot pikes yeah. and whatnot. We yeah, played Swiss, so we strong. fought with pikes, but our biggest ones were 14 that we decided to use. 10s okay. and 14s because they were easier to control. Uh huh. We the sealed knot guys and they got their 18 foot pikes and are way out there. Mm -hmm. There's eight, even 18 feet, probably. And they're out there. And when you got something that long, you can whip the end. So it, Ah. Uh. A lot of fun. I think it was that so we could get it. We had enough people to get it more organized where groups.
trade a certain uh, thing. It's different here because we have these big societies and they're all knights or aspiring to be knights. That's our, our thing. Uh -huh. Over there, there's lots of little groups that all portray different aspects of a particular time period. And then they all come together, so each one has their own specialty. Mm -hmm. Interesting. We like actually fighting the knights. We prefer fighting the, the, the English knights. You guys portray the knights with our pikes because they have to come in to get us because they're all carrying swords or maybe a short pole axe, but they have to come in and we've got our halberds and our pikes all just hammering them. Kick him in the groin, he's got protection! Hey now, <laughs> no dirty pull, you know. If girls get kicked there, that hurts too. Oh yeah, I know. Just for your information. Oh, I hit a girl with a pole axe once there. How? Oh, and a pike. Never mind. Same girl. <laughs> <laughs>